Okay, as we uh, start the Chitas every day. Today is the uh, 26th day of the month of Adar. It's a, it's a Wednesday. Okay, today we uh, go from Parshas Vayako into Parshas Pekude. So buckle in. We are holding on chapter 38, verse number one. By asking to Mizbeach, and he made the Mizbeach, the outer altar, the, the, the altar where they burnt the sacrifices. Atse Shitti made that out of acacia wood. Hamesh Amas Arkai, it was five cubits in long, the Hamesh Amas Rachbai, and five cubits its width. Ravua, the altar was square, the Shalash Amas Kamase, and it was three cubits the height. By Yasset's Arkainis of Alabar Pinais. And he made its horns like on a small altar. They had horns sticking out in the corner. From the corners came out the horns. And this altar was covered with copper. Verse number three. And then he made all the vessels of this mezbeach. Uh, it's a sirais, it's pots, that's a year, a year in the shovels, that's a misericoys, and the sprinkling basin, that's a misericoys, and the fresh flesh hooks, that's a machtois, and the fire pans, that's coal, clay love, and all its vessels, also in the he made it out of copper. This was a very busy altar. All the sacrificial offerings were brought outside, and this was outside the temple. And that's why it was made out of copper. Verse number four. And then he made to this Mizbech, uh, he made a copper grating, a beautiful copper grating. I don't have the book on me, a beautiful copper grating around the altar that was like a like whole grating um, that was like a belt around the altar. It was like a grating of netting work. Tachat Karkov, beneath the ledge, Melamata Achetze, until the middle. So it was a middle, like a middle geitel of copper hold uh, sheet of, uh, of, uh, of copper. So it looked like this rounded uh, geitel, rounded, rounded sheath around the, uh, around the altar. Vayitha Kabata, boys, verse from the five. Um, uh, um, and then he cast its four rings on the four ends of the copper grating to holders for the poles and then he made the poles and he overlaid them with copper verse number seven and he inserted the poles into the rings on the sides of the altar, to carry it, he made them hollow out of boards. The notch is hollow out of bird, the voice means hollow and similar, the voice means hollow. So the boards of the acacia wood were placed on all sides and the hollow part was in the middle. So in the center of the Mizbeach was hollow because it was filled with earth. Verse number eight. And then he made the wash basin, Nechoshes, copper. And its base, copper. The Manasat's voice from the mirrors, Ashitzavu, which the women who had set up the legions, Pesach Oyo Moid. He covered this basin with mirrors, women, women's mirrors. So now she says, what does that mean? Usually a woman owned mirrors, which they would look into and they adorned themselves. They, they looked into mirrors. Even, and they, and they donated to the base of Middash. So Betzalo didn't know what to do with these mirrors. There was no mirrors in the base of Middash. Even these mirrors, they did not hold back from bringing to contribution to the Mishkan. But Moshe rejected them because they were made for temptation, inspiring lustful thoughts. So 
What are you bringing mirrors to the base of Migdosh, Moshe Rabbeinu? So this is like not needed in the temple. Mirrors are made for vanity. The only one blessed to be, he said to him, accept them. He said, no, take these mirrors. For though these are more precious to me than anything because, of, because through them, the woman set up many legions to the children they gave birth in Egypt. When their husband was weary from backbreaking labor, they, the woman, would go, would go and bring them food and drink and give them to eat. Then they would, the woman would take their mirrors and each one would see herself with her husband in the mirror and she would seduce him with words saying, I am more beautiful than you. And in this way, they aroused their husbands to desire and they would have relation with them and conceiving and giving birth. As it says, under the apple tree, I arouse you. And that, that alludes to, the, to the, the women who would go out to the husbands who, who were broken in, in the slavery of Egypt, not want to have any more children. And they inspired their husbands to have relationships. This is the meaning, the Mare's Hat's voice. This is the meaning, the mirrors who set up legions. For these, the mirrors, the waistband was made because it, the purpose to make peace between man and his wife. Also, by giving, giving from this base wind, from this kir, it was given the drink of water that was uh, the woman who uh, her husband suspected her. They took the water from this kir. So, so they, 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 they were given, they, they, this was a, a kir was also created for the concept of peace between the husband and his wife. And his wife. Um, so this was the, the this was the Abish had said that you should cover, take the mirrors and cover the kiar with these mirrors. And that's what Fitzalo did. He took the mirrors and he covered the waste bin with these mirrors. And that's why, and this had a special meaning to the Jews, reminding them of even in Egypt how the women continued to want to build up the Jewish nation even in the land of Mitzrayim and on the great hardship. Verse number nine. And then he made a court chart. On the southern side, there were there were hangings from the court chart of twisted fine linen, 100 cubits. So this was the, he built an outer court chart. He built a fence around the outer court chart. 100 cubits on one side, on Medeim Esim, their pillars were 20, but the name Asim and their sockets were 20. The Choshesh, these were all pillars of, of copper. Vavi Amudim, the Chashikeim Kesev, and the hooks of the pillars and their bands were silver. Lepat Safon, and so on the northern side was a hundred Amma. Again, a hundred Amma is at least, uh, that'd be the courtyard with either, I can how much an Amma is. If you take it 15 inches, is an Amma. So a uh, hundred Amma is 150 feet. Medeim um, Esim, their pillars were 20, but the name Esim and their sockets were 20, copper, and their hooks were made out of silver. Lefat Yom and the western side, Kaloyim, Hamishim Amas. So, so it was, a, a, let's say, so it was 100 Amas by 50 Amas. So again, it depends how much, uh, if I'm at one point, uh, it's 150 feet by, uh, by 75 feet, something like that. So, uh, uh, and and uh, uh, pillars and their bands were silver. Verse 13, the past Kedma and the Eastern side was again 50 cubits. Kaloyim, Kaloyim, the hangings on the shoulders were 50 cubits. Akata, the name Shalosh, but the name Shalosh, and they had the, there were pillars were three and their sockets three. Akata Vashen into the second shoulder because they had to, there was the entrance. On that side, on the eastern side, was the entrance to the temple. So there was uh, uh, 15, 15 on one side and 50 on the other side, and in the middle was the entrance. Lokata Vashem in the shoulder, either side, the gate of the courtyard was hanging 15 cubits, the pillars three, and the sockets three. Kol Kalea Chatzasaviv, all the hangings, the actual curtain was made out of twisted fine linen. Verse 17. And the sockets to the pillars were all copper. The hooks to all the pillars and the bands were silver. And the overlay over the tops of were silver. 
the hay mukshak and kesev, and their bands with silver, or a mudachacha to all the pillars of the courtyard. Matzach mushadachacha, and the screen, the entrance on the eastern side with Maitzei Reikim was a, with the gate of the courtyard was a work of embroidered made of blue, purple, and crimson wool. That's the mama, and it twisted the fine linen, 20 cubits long, and a tight and width with five cubits, corresponding to the hanging of the curtain. Verse number 19. And the pillars to this entrance was uh, Arba, was, was four, and the sockets was four. I mean, they, they, they divided, took four pillars, and, and it was 20 feet, 20 amas. And they hung this 20 amas of curtain on these four pillars. And Tipei Rosh and Kesev, and the tops and the bands were silver. All the pegs of the Mishkan in the courtyard was all upper. And that ends the portion of Ayakel. And now we go into the portion of Pekudah. Ela Pekudah, Mishkan, Mishkan, Edus. These are the numbers of the Mishkan, the Mishkan of testimony. Which was counted by the command of Moshe. Aveda Salavim, the work of Levim, Biadi Summer, in the hands of his summer, Ben Aaron Akoyin, his summer, the son of Aaron the priest. The Rashi says in this Pasha, all weights of the nation for the Mishkan were counted the silver of gold and copper and its implement of their work. So this was now he made a calculation. Moshe made, made, made sure to give a full, a full accounting of all the money that came in and exactly what was used. A Mishkan, Mishkan. Why does it say two times in the pasuk? Ela bekudi a Mishkan, Mishkan aedus. So we hear Shnei Pama led the Mishkan. So that we hear the the Rashi says this is this is alludes to the temple, which was taken. As a security, a mashkin, by the two destruction of Israel's iniquities, the temple was taken as a collateral for Israel's sin. When Israel repents, the third temple will be rebuilt. So to the Abishad, God just took it as a mashkin, as collateral for the sins, and amid Shem will give us back the collateral. Mishkan Eidus, why is it called a Mishkan of testimony? Rashi says, was a testimony for Israel. And the Holy One, blessed be He, forgave them for the sin of the golden calf. So it was a testament, there was a Mishkan. Uh, it gave testimony to the world. That's the sadness that we don't have this Mishkan. We don't have the Bismidosh that gives a testimony that God dwells in the midst of the Jewish nation. Uh, with the work of the Levim, I mean, what does that mean? Uh, the numbers, uh, the counting of the Mishkan and its finishing, which is given over to the Levites in the desert to dismantle, to set up. So this ultimately, this was not built by the Levi, it was built by Betzalel and, 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 and Eliyah. But they were given the entire responsibility of taking care of this Mishkan. I mean, Betzalel and all the workers, when they finished a job, they gave it over to the Levi. It became the Levites' obligation to take care of this Mishkan. Biyad Yisama, and who was the head guy? Was Yisama, was a Koyin. Well, he was appointed over them to deliver to each per, per, uh, paternal family the work incumbent upon them. As we'll learn that the Levites were divided in a couple of families, and each one had different obligations in the temple. So everybody knew their responsibility, and every it was it was divided by in the tribes in the tribe of the Levi was divided to the family as we'll explain later in the Torah, and each family taught their children their responsibility in the temple, and so went from generation to generation. Verse twenty-two, twenty-two. Ben Uri Yehudi, and Betzalel the son of Uri, the son of Hur, who was from the tribe of Judah. Also, as Kol Ashet Siva Hashem Et Moshe, he made everything that God told Moshe. What does that mean? Now she says that Moshe had commanded him is not written here. It says that God has commanded him. What do you mean? But Saul didn't have a straight connection to God. He had everything that he knew was from Moshe. 
So what does it mean that he says Betzalel did whatever God said to Moshe? Ah, here we learn, Rashi says, that Moshe and Betzalel had a disagreement. What should be done first? Moshe said to build the, build the, the, the vessels, and Betzalel said, no, you're first supposed to build the temple and then build the vessels. So they had this argument, and ultimately, God sided with Betzalel. And therefore, he called him, Moshe Rabbeinu called him Betzalel, Betzel Kel, that you're in the, you're in the, in the, in the, in the shadow of God, that you knew exactly really what God wanted, even though God didn't talk to you and tell you, he told me, but you knew more about the building of the Smishkan and the purpose of it, even more than I knew it. And you were right. First, you build the building, and then you build the utensils. And there's a whole beautiful sikha of the Rebbe on this, that uh, what was their real argument? Because was it a basic uh, building argument? Uh, you know, what do you build first, uh, the building or the utensils? Or was it a deeper spiritual argument of what is the purpose of the Mishkan and what, what is more important, the building or the utensils that is from? Okay, so that's why it's called Betzalah. Verse 30, 23. The heat of Eliyahu ben Echisamach and him was with Eliyahu the son of Echisam Lamati Don. Chodesh v'Chesed, he was a master craftsman, and a master weaver. The tailors of our government the embroidery of blue and purple and crimson wool and linen. Verse twenty-four. All the gold that was used in the work of the work of the mission of the Melachas Hakodesh, Ahi Zava Tnufa. And the gold of the of the waving was twenty nine talents, seven hundred and thirty shekel, according to the holy shekel. So, and this was a big number. Uh, talents kika is sixty mana. Rasha, the mana of the holy was double. The normal mana, normal mana. Hence, the talent mentioned here was equal to 120 ordinary monas, twice the normal talent. And the mana was 25 sellers. Sell, Thus, the talent of the holy was 3,000 shekel. Therefore, the text counted the detail of the shekel that were less than 3,000, since there were not an amount of talent, and thus, they were had numerated separately. So, I don't know how we hear the number exactly, but it's, you, can, you can find out uh, how much Exactly today in the weight of gold was 29 talents and 730 shekels. Verse 25. And the silver of the community numbers was 100 talents of silver. And 775 shekel according to the Holy Shekel. The silver was bought exactly by the by the machsa shekel beka lagavelas. The silver was a beka per head. That's why we know exactly where the silver went. It went to the adonim to the sockets. So the half a shekel, according to the holy shekel, for each one goes through the counting from twenty one and upwards for six hundred and three thousand five hundred and fifty people. So we know. How much silver? Because each one gave a half a shekel. So, so it actually says, Becca, we share a mishkal. The Becca is, is the name of the weight of a half a shekel. Shashat Mayus Elef. This is how many Israelites were. Their number equaled, equaled this after Mishkan was erected, as it appears in the book of Numbers. Now, too, when they donated to the Mishkan, this is how many they were. The number of a half a shekel of 600,000 equals. 100 talent, each one equivalent of 3,000 shekel. Also, 600,000 halves of shekel equals 300,000 whole, which equals 100 talent. The additional 3,550 half shekel half equals 1,775 shekel. So that's how it comes up to three. Uh, 100,000 whole shekels equal that amount of 100 talents. 
a castle. 100 talents of silver was used for the casting of the sockets, the apparatus, and the casting of the sockets of the dividing curtains. Measa Donel and Measa Kika Kika loaded 100 sockets out of 100 talents, one talent for each socket. So there was 100 talents, and they'll soon see what they do the rest. With the 1,000, 1,700, 1,750, it was used for the other things. But 100 sockets was the 100 talent because each socket, each, each, each keresh had two sockets. Each, each, each socket for each keresh was a talent. And that's how it was divided. So you know exactly how much silver was there and what it was exactly used for. There were the sockets for the planks of the Mishkan, which was 48 planks, which had 96 sockets, in addition to the four sockets of the dividing curtain, equaled 100 for silver, but the rest of the sockets, the total scribes, were made out of copper. But the sockets of the Mishkan, the actual Mishkan was made out of silver. That's the Ella, verse 28, the Ella of Shah Meis, and out of the 100, 1,775 shekel left over silver, he made the hooks, all the hooks for the pillars and the cover of the tops. We just mentioned today, all the hooks were silver. The top, the top, was of each of these uh, the, of each of these uh, pillars that, that the, the curtain the chutzer was hanging the curtains of the chutzer was hanging were all silver so that was made with the leftover one thousand seven hundred and seventy five seconds. Verse twenty nine, the chayshes at nufa and the copper shivim kikar with seventy talents of copper, five of them shekel and two. 2,400 shekels. And with that, with all this copy, he made all the sockets of the tent, the entrance of the tent. He made out of all this copy, he made the cup of the altar and the copper grating upon it and, he, and, and all the implements of the altar, which was copper. Verse 35, one, the sockets of the courtyard all around the sockets of the gate to the courtyard, all the pegs of the Mishkan and all the pegs of the courtyard were all copper. So that's what was all the copper was used for. Verse chapter 39, verse one, number one. And for all the blue and purple and crimson wool, they made the meshwear garment to serve the holy. And they use it all for made the Aaron's holy garments, and he had commanded, as he was commanded by the angel, by Moshe, commanded by God to Moshe. The Rashi says linen is not mentioned here. What happened to the linen, the sheish? I concluded from here that these big diasra were not garments of the Kohuna. Mentioned again, he's mentioned many times that over here, this Pasuk is not talking about the Kohanim, it's talking about the garments of the utensils, and they were not made out of linen. For all the Kohanim garments were linen. Instead, I believe that they are the garments in which the Kohanim covered the holy furnishings at the time that they withdraw the, 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 these furnishings, take them on the journey. These are the garments that the Pasuk is talking about. Not the garments of the Kayin, but the garments of the vessels that covered the vessels in their journey. And that's why no linen is mentioned in this verse, because they were not made out of linen. In which of tomorrow, I'll give you, uh, I'll look it up in the art scroll, I'll give you the exact uh, number of how much gold, silver, and copper was donated to the Beit HaMidosh. You'll realize how much money was there. Okay, we are holding, we finished the Chumash, we're now going to the Tanya of the day. We are holding in the middle of chapter 37 of Tanya. 
the Alter Rebbe is again trying to press upon us the power of uh, doing a mitzvah in this world. And um, that even though our neshama, our soul is a spiritual entity, which, which, uh, which is a journey, the soul's journey from the higher worlds to the upper worlds is extremely a very big journey and extremely a very big descent from its journey, the way it comes from heaven to this world. So you would think that it would uh, be a diminishing concept, but the Alter Rebbe tells us no, that the most important aspect of the whole purpose of this journey is for the soul to come down in this world and for the soul to invest itself in a body and for the soul to rectify this body because the soul itself, as the Alter Rebbe is going to say, needs no rectification. Its whole purpose of its descent in this world is to give the body its rectification. That's the whole reason why it came down. There would be no reason why the soul would come down to the body if not to make this body and to elevate this, this physical world. If that's not the purpose, then there would be no reason to have a, 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 a descent of the soul to the body. Because this descent of the soul to the body is extremely a big descent. You're taking something that's totally spiritual and bringing it into a total physical reality. What would be the purpose of taking something so lofty and bringing it down in such a diminishing level if not that there's a great purpose in elevating this physical level? And that is what the Abishta wanted. So we have to realize that it's not about the upper worlds. The upper worlds is all about the lower worlds. And the Abish to create the whole upper worlds and the whole journey of the soul is that it should come down into this body and to do one mitzvah. And that's why we say every morning, I thank the Abish to Shazai to be Nishmatsi, that he gave me back my soul. This is a great miracle that God every day forces a soul from heaven to come back into a physical body. Because God has unbelievable faith in us that we will do something positive today. We will do a mitzvah today that's going to change the world. That's how God has such emunah and such faith that he's created all these upper worlds and all these unbelievable descents, all for one good deed that a Jew is going to do today. And that's that's what the Alta Rebbe wants to impress upon us. For Paul Nitzutz, every spark, did not descend into this world to perfect itself. No, it's a spiritual entity. The spark of God doesn't need perfection, but to perfect the body and the vital soul as the Alta Rebbe soon even though this is a great descent. This is an exo for the soul. Mamish. Not an exo soul in theory. This is a real exile. For even if the soul comes down into the body and the body becomes a tzaddik, and he serves God with great delight and abundant love. It's no comparison to where the soul of the Gan Eden. Over there, he was, all the love and fear of God that he has in this world is nothing to the love and fear of God that he had in heaven. So it's a descent. So even a tzaddik that's going to be so, serve God in love and fear in this world, he was much better in the world to come. He was much better in Gan Eden. So with the descent, he never will attain the quality of attachment to God with fear and love that the soul experienced prior to his descent in this corporal world or even to the fraction of its fear that he had and love of God that he had before he came to the world. 
ואין ערך ודימים ביניהם כלל. And there's no comparison or similarity whatsoever between them, between the love and fear of God, experience of soul on earth to that love that he had above. Shaguf ain't a yachal isbel. Because how great a person is, he's ultimately in a body. And the body limits the soul. How great the person is going to be, it's still a limitation. He's a physical person. It doesn't make a difference how great that person is, how holy he is, he's still a physical person. And as long as he's a physical person, it's going to diminish this, this capacity of spiritual love. And that's the reality. So wh why would God do this? But David said, you know what? It's fine. Because I'm not looking for love and fear. I'm looking for action. Everything is beautiful, love and fear. I'm looking for physical action. That's what's important to me, God says. You're right. You're going to have great love above. You're going to have great love, fear above. I'm not looking for that only. I'm looking for transformation. One little mitzvah that you're going to do in this world is more important to me than all the love and fear that you have for me. That's what the Abish says. And, and the Alton Ebbish says, that that you're alive proves it. You don't have to have more proof than that. If God was looking for love and fear, then he would keep you in heaven. Because there you can give him much more love and fear. But God is looking for action. He's looking to transform the physical world. And he cannot do that without you coming into this world. So it's worth it for him. All the upper worlds. And all to give away all the love and fear you're going to have for him in upper worlds. All that you should do one mitzvah in this world. That's more important to him. That is Dede Batachtein. That's the concept of God wanting a dwelling place in this world. He's willing to forgo all the upper worlds and all the love and all the fear and all the celestial loving and, and, and godliness, all for one mitzvah. That's where he's happy. He's happy, much more happy with the Jew doing one mitzvah than all the love and fear in heaven. If you can imagine. So that's it. But in a sense, in this world, to be clothed in the body, the vital soul, for the, for, it is for the sole purpose to rectify and perfecting them. To separate it from evil. Shashalas, clippers, atmeis. But the three impure clippers, by observing the 365 prohibitions and their offshoots. So the Abish says, you know what? I want to see if you can hold, for me, if you're going to hold back from one, doing one of Veda, I'm more happy than all the love you're going to give me. That is more important to me. And that's why I descended your soul and took the chance, right? Took a chance. So I also took a chance. I think God's a partner in, in every person's creation. That's why I say, God sent my soul down. He took a chance, right? My soul is in heaven serving him. He says, you know what? Thank you very much for all the service. I want you to go, I want you to wake up today in the morning. I want you to go and do so. I want to see what you're going to do. I trust that you're going to go and do one good deed. I have that trust. Let me see. And he goes, he does unbelievable things. He puts the soul back into the body. And now he says, let's see. I trust you. Go out and see what you're going to do. And it's all worth it for me. I know that you serve me in heaven beautifully, but I want you to see if I'm going to put you in a dark place. And I want you to bring some light. Let me see what you're going to do. And to elevate the vital soul together with the portion of the world at large that relates to my vital soul. As we said before, that every person has a job in this world. Every human being. I cannot take away your job. You cannot take away my job. And we're not talking about spiritual job. We're about physical job. We all have different talents. And we all need to use that, our talents, for the service of HaKadosh Baruch, for the service of God, for the service of humanity. And every person can say, okay, you do the job for me. I'm going on vacation. No. Maybe send that in a Shama today. What are you doing today? 
will attach the bliach be'er is safe to to bring to bind them and uh, to bind them and unite them with the infinite light of God. Asheyam shechva may dekiyim when a person perform will will draws and connects God to it to the to the performing of two hundred forty eight positive commandments through the agency of, which is done through the agency of the vital soul. I cannot do one mitzvah in heaven. I can have a lot of love. I can have a lot of fear. I can have a lot of spiritual connections. I cannot do one mitzvah. And that's what God wants. It's more important for God that one mitzvah than all the celestial worlds. Because he created all the celestial worlds all for that one mitzvah. For the vital soul. It makes difference how holy you are. So that means how godly you are. You cannot do a mitzvah without a body. That's the way it's set up. The mitzvahs in the Torah need to be done in a physical world. All mitzvahs in the Torah are connected to the physical world. So therefore, everybody needs to be in a body. Let me difference if he's a great tzaddik. Let me difference if he's not a tzaddik. He needs to be in a body. Because ultimately, the greatest tzaddik in the world that's not in a body and not put on film like a simple Jew today can put on film. Because ultimately, he's not in the body. And that's the reality. And the Abish to create it all, the whole world, is that you should put on film. And this neshama that's out of the body cannot put on film. It makes a difference how much spiritual uh, elevation and spiritual love he has of God. He cannot do the mitzvah. That's the opposite. Imagine a pain for the soul that now he sees the beauty, the beauty of God and he cannot put on film. That's one of the reasons why when you go to a cemetery, tradition is you take your tzitzes and you hide it. That's not to, in, not to, not to embarrass the, the, all these souls that you're going to in their midst and they look at you and they say, wow, we can't put on tzitzes. That's a simple mitzvah. Look how, we, look how we cannot do that. It makes them jealous. So we should realize that we should run out and do a mitzvah that we cannot do. And no love and no fear is going gonna, is gonna to help you for not doing that mitzvah. As it's brought down in Kabbalah. The divine soul doesn't need to have any perfection. It is perfect. The, the godly soul is perfect. The the godly soul does not need this world. It doesn't even want to come down to the world. So why does it come down here? He comes down to fix the world. He has a job. He has a mission. That's what you have to understand. We have to understand that the godly soul has a mission. Everything that we're doing for the world, the godly soul, this is not my mission. I came down for a mission. You're wasting my time with all the stuff. Let's do my mission. I don't need anything. I have a mission. I'm a mission by God. Again, I said it in the morning. The Abish should send me down my soul today in the morning for a mission. Either I'm going to do my mission or you're going to waste my day. What's my mission? Go do a mitzvah. That's my mission. My mission is to do a mitzvah. Everything else is, is all for that mission. The Alter Rebbe said, this is the mystery. If you want to know the mystery of Golos Hashem, the exile of the Shechina. Meaning, whose purpose, why did the Shechina come down to the world? What? That is Didibet God says, I'm willing to go and hide and descend into the world. All for one reason, because I want to did it, but I'll tell them, I want to be revealed in the world. That's all I want. I want to be revealed in this world. And I'm willing to go into Gullus. God needs to go into Gullus. I'm willing to go into exile. All for that concept. Because it's so precious to me. That one mitzvah is so precious to me, I'm willing to descend myself and to go. So, can you imagine that God is precious to him to do a mitzvah? That we do a mitzvah? And God says it. And that's what the Gemara says. You know, there's no secrets over here. 
God says it openly. You go do what well, mitzvah, it's precious to me. I'm telling you it's precious to me. You're saying it's not so precious. I'm telling you. I'm asking for the mitzvah. I'm telling you it's precious to me. That one well, mitzvah is all, more precious to me than all the upper worlds and all the malachim and all the upper worlds and all the angels sitting there and all the even the souls in heaven praising me. It's nothing. I am not, in, it's wonderful, but I am interested in you doing the mitzvah. That's more important to me. We always think that the big things are important. It's not. It's the small things that are important. Which is to refine the sparks of holiness. which fell into the clippers. So too does the divine soul enter into exile within the body and the vital soul in order to perfect them and extract from them the sparks of holiness which they contain. So the difference between self between the shechina and the and and and, and the soul is that the shechina is not forced to come into the world. He wants to come into the world to hide itself. The 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 the, the, um, the what do you call it? the uh, the neshama is forced to come into the world. That's the difference. So God forces the neshama to come down into this physical body, and that's the difference between the Shekhinah and the Ebesh itself in the third. And that's why I say again, I, as I said before, I say the Maida'ani every morning. I thank God for forcing the Neshama to come down into my body. And that ends the uh, Tanya of the day. Uh, my friends, we, um, um, we, uh, I, we go to the, uh, the, the Tanya, the, the Tilim of the day is chapter 19, uh, chapter 119, the second part of chapter number 119, the 26th day of of uh, other so um is the second part of chapter 119 starting i believe from the letter mem until the end of the chapter i wish you a beautiful happy wonderful healthy day go do one mitzvah today okay okay have a great day you too rabbi thank you